Well, thank you for inviting me and thank you for coming. Gracias por invitarme y gracias por estar acá hoy. I hope we have some good discussions together this morning. Espero que tengamos unas buenas discusiones o diálogos esta mañana. And I hope, I hope I'll shake up some of your views on some issues to do with feedback. Y espero poder eh, remecer un poco algunas de las ideas que quizás puedan tener respecto a lo que es la retroalimentación. What I'm going to do is talk largely about an article that's called Beyond Feedback. Una de las cosas que vamos a hacer es eh, conversar ampliamente respecto de un artículo eh, eh, que se llama Más allá de la retroalimentación. And this is really because I think we need to do things other than just feedback to achieve what we want. Y esto es porque creo que debemos hacer cosas que van justamente más allá, muchas más cosas más allá de retroalimentar para poder lograr lo que queremos. I've been writing articles um, about this since 19, uh, about feedback in higher education since 1983. And there are four in particular about this topic. There's this journal article, which is fairly formal. Then there are three book chapters. Hay tres, eh, también capítulos en Now, all four documents will be available to you. Y los cuatro documentos estarán disponibles para um, Because I've, given, I've sent them all to um, Gloria here. And, and, she's, and I would like you to make, make, have a look at all of them. The thing about the chapters is that they are less formal. Y el asunto de respecto de los capítulos es que son menos formales. So I'm able to explain what I did in my own classes and to give some stories. Y ahí puedo explicar más en detalle lo que he hecho en las clases y también darles más, eh, contarles más historias, etc. Okay, so the title you have for today's address has got beyond feedback as its two key words. Eh, y el, el, yeah. el título del, digamos, del artículo que vamos a hablar hoy día se llama eh, Beyond Feedback. Okay. Esas son las dos palabras, digamos, eh, claves. Tiene dos palabras claves, perdón. Ok, I'll now give you the first three words y les voy a dar las primeras tres palabras of the book chapters. de los eh, capítulos cuando me refiero a un tema. So you'll know what to look for. Para que, saben, para que puedan saber dónde buscar. Ok, the first one of these is called Opening Up Feedback. El primero de estos se llama como Abriendo la Retroalimentación, Opening Up Feedback. Um, the second one is called Learning from Assessment Events. El segundo se llama eh, Learning from Assessment Events, que es aprendiendo de eventos, digamos, evaluativos. And the other one is called Backwards, Backwards Assessment Evaluations. Y el, el último se llama Backward Assessment Evaluations, que es como evaluaciones eh, inversas. Now, the last one should... The, the last one published is backwards, but I suggest that you read it before the learning from assessment events. Okay. Now, I want you first of all to write down what your definition of feedback would be. Now, as you know, I come from Australia. Y como saben, vengo de Australia. And feedback is a word that's used all the time, every day. You listen to the radio, and at the change of programs, they say, send us your feedback. Send us on, send, send it on Twitter or eh, email. I don't know what happens to all that feedback. But the same thing happens with television. Send us your feedback. Tell us what, tell us what you think. Now, the term um, feedback has a special meaning in some fields Tiene un significado especial en ciertos campos, and, is, en cierta and there's one in, in one in particular that I want to focus on in a few moments. Now, there are many, many books and articles which will boldly claim that feedback is essential for learning. Hay muchos libros y artículos que van a hacer una declaración casi definitiva, ¿cierto?, de que la retroalimentación es esencial para el aprendizaje. And it, it's, it's the most important tool that we can use as lecturers or professors. Y es la herramienta más importante que podemos usar como profesores o académicos. So, if you look at the, the journals that are on assessment, and assessment, you'll find that the articles have 
all sorts to do with every aspect of feedback. Y si buscamos entonces cierto las revistas de evaluación, podemos encontrar un sinnúmero de artículos que se refieren a todos, digamos, los aspectos de lo que es la retroalimentación. Whether it's through written comments or through verbal um, recording. Ya sea a través de ciertos comentarios por escrito o también de eh, retroalimentación entregada de vía oral, cierto, o grabada. Or other means. O de otras formas. Now, university policies very often state, at least in Australian, when I say policies, I'm really talking about Australian universities, mm -hmm. but our policies very often require that professors will give feedback to all their students for everything they do. Las políticas, digamos, desde la universidad, y casi siempre me voy a estar refiriendo a mi universidad en Australia o las universidades australianas, el caso nuestro es que eh, se requiere en la política de la universidad que los profesores entreguen retroalimentación a sus estudiantes. If you consult books on teaching and learning in higher education, there's nearly always one chapter about feedback. Y si consultas libros respecto de educación superior, va a haber de enseñanza y aprendizaje, eh, casi siempre va a haber un capítulo dedicado a la retroalimentación. It's about the only thing that's singled out for special attention. Es casi el único punto, digamos, que está eh, como identificado o se especifica, ¿cierto?, que debe tener una atención particular. And in some countries where there are national surveys of student experience in higher education. Y en algunos países donde hay, una, hay encuestas eh, de, a nivel, digamos, eh, nacional respecto de la experiencia de los estudiantes en la educación superior. As occurs in Australia, United Kingdom and United States. Así como sucede en Estados Unidos, en Australia y en el Reino Unido. This, these, these are surveys at the end of a, course, of a degree. Estos son normalmente encuestas eh, que se realizan al final, digamos, de la carrera o the, del, del programa de, de, de... There are always a set of about five questions. Y casi siempre hay, o siempre hay, un set o un grupo de más o menos unas cinco preguntas. About the feedback you were given. Respecto de la retroalimentación que recibieron. Now, did you get feedback? ¿Recibiste retroalimentación? Was it good feedback? Era buena retroalimentación? Did you use it to learn from? ¿Te sirvió para aprender? Was it prompt? ¿Fue oportuna? Was it understandable? ¿Fue compre ¿Era comprensible? So those sort of questions. Ese tipo de preguntas. And that reinforces in the university mind the importance of feedback scores. Y eso en la mentalidad de la universidad refuerza, cierto, eh, la importancia de eh, la retroalimentación en, 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 la, en in el the, resultado. In the United Kingdom, Universities are ranked according to their survey of student experience. En el Reino Unido, los, las universidades son rankeadas de acuerdo a esta encuesta de la experiencia de los alumnos. And at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, y la Universidad de Edimburgo en, en, en Escocia, their feedback scores, the scores about feedback, were always the lowest in the country. The schools that you? The scores on feedback. Uh -huh. At the University were, were the lowest in the country. Ah, dice que las escuelas de retroalimentación dice eran las más bajas en el país. So they appointed a pro vice chancellor. Así que ah, la, ya aquellas universidades que eran las más bajas en el país respecto de retroalimentación, lo que hicieron fue entonces nombrar un un, un vice rector o algo así. Who's responsible? It, who's responsible? It was to get the feedback scores up. ¿Y cuál era la responsabilidad entonces? Eh, lograr mayor puntaje en temas de retroalimentación. Another funny thing about Oxford University. O algo eh, simpático sobre la Universidad de Oxford. Is that their scores were always very low. Es que sus puntajes siempre eran muy bajos. And they started to think, well, why are our feedback scores very low? ¿Por qué nuestros puntajes son tan bajos respecto de la retroalimentación? The reason was very simple. La razón era muy simple. It was the way they were doing their teaching. Era la forma en que estaban enseñando. Every student spends at least one hour a week. Y cada estudiante eh, pasa al menos una hora semanal. Face to face with their tutor. Eh, cara a cara, digamos, en persona con su tutor. And they talked. Y conversan. <laughs> But the students didn't call that feedback. Pero los estudiantes no le llamaban retroalimentación. They just talked as part of advisement. Pensaron que era parte, digamos, de la asesoría que le dan. So they had to put signs up every way saying, when you talk to your tutor, Así que tuvieron que poner letreros, ¿cierto? Cuando hablas con tu tutor, you are getting feedback. Te estamos dando retroalimentación. <laughs> And the scores went up. Y ahí subieron los puntajes. <laughs> Now, why do I say beyond feedback? Ahora, ¿por qué digo más allá de la retroalimentación? The reason is that it is fundamentally flawed. La razón es porque tiene una falla fundamental. 
This doesn't mean it's just often badly done. Ahora, esto no quiere decir solamente que a menudo se hace de forma incorrecta. It means it's got a serious problem with it. Quiere decir que tiene, hay un problema serio respecto de este concepto. There are better things we can do. Hay cosas mejores que podríamos hacer. That will have better results for the students. Y que daría mejores resultados para los estudiantes. Now I want to take you back to the origin of the word feedback. Y quiero que podamos volver al origen de la palabra retroalimentación. It was first used in, con in relation to industrial processes that needed to be controlled. Fue usada en, primer, en, en primera instancia en eh, procesos industriales, digamos, en, en contextos industriales para eh, hablar de procesos que debían ser controlados. They were largely, they were largely mechanical and electrical systems. Y en general, eh, mayormente eran sistemas eh, eléctricos y mecánicos. We have a simple example sometimes when we get that squeal in rooms that have loudspeakers. Y tenemos un ejemplo simple, ¿cierto? Cuando sentimos ese, ese chirrido, ese pito, ¿cierto? En una, en una sala donde, donde tenemos eh, los parlantes que están a alto volumen. And what's happening is that some of the sound from the speakers y que lo que pasa es que un poco del, del, del sonido, digamos, que viene de los parlantes is getting back into the system through the microphone está, es, está devolviendo, ¿cierto? Al sistema a través de los micrófonos and being amplified again. Y está siendo amplificado and, nuevamente. And so it grows and so it squeals. Así Así que, cierto, crece y por lo mismo hace ese, ese sonido. Now, feedback's based on what, what a simple loop model, a loop model, model. model. a simple oh, loop, loop model. model. Okay. Yeah. El, la retroalimentación, entonces, está basada en un modelo simple, digamos, de como un loop, cierto, de como un yeah. círculo. Yeah. When I first wrote the first draft of my main article on feedback, la primera vez que escribí el primer borrador que hice sobre mi artículo principal respecto a retroalimentación, I was a visiting scholar at the University of Colorado, Boulder. Estaba este, visitando a un académico en la Universidad de Boulder, en Colorado. So I thought, well, I'll find out what engineers think, or how they define feedback. Bueno, voy a entonces descubrir cómo los ingenieros definen la retroalimentación. So I went across the snow to the engineering library. Así que fue, eh, eh, crucé, digamos, hacia la, la biblioteca de ingeniería. And looked at all the definitions I could find. Y busqué todas las definiciones que pude encontrar. And one stood out as particularly relevant. Y una eh, eh, me, me llamó la atención y la encontré particularmente relevante. It's by a man called Rama Prasad. Don't worry about how it's spelled because if you get the article, you'll see how it's spelled. Okay. This is what this what his was. I'm going to read it through once. Then Priscilla will read it through, and then I will emphasize some words. And as I emphasize the words, I want to see if you've got any of those words in your definition. Voy a leer la definición primero, después yo después Priscilla la va a leer. Y eh, después la voy a leer eh, enfatizando algunas palabras. Y a medida que enfatice esas palabras, me gustaría que ustedes pudiesen ver si alguna de esas palabras están presentes en la definición que ustedes escribieron. Ok, here's his Esta es definición. Feedback is information about the gap between the actual level and the reference level of a system parameter which is used to alter the gap in some way. Ok, dice... La traducción sería algo así como retroalimentación es información respecto de la brecha entre el nivel actual y el nivel de referencia de un sistema de parámetros que es usado para alterar la brecha de cierta forma. Now, the, fortunately, this room is air conditioned. Yeah, it is fortunately. Fortunately. Sí, afortunadamente esta, esta sala tiene cierto eh, eh, aire acondicionado o está... And around the corner behind these books, there's a little box that controls the temperature. It doesn't make more hot air come in itself, but it sends signal to the, the machinery that does. No hace cierto que entre el aire caliente por sí sola, pero sí envía una señal al al mecanismo que hace que suceda. And that machinery is not located in the room; it's off-site. Y esta esa máquina, digamos, que es la que permite que llegue el aire, no está ubicada en esta sala, sino está afuera. I'm interested in the little box that's got the regulating in it. Y yo estoy interesado en esa pequeña cajita que eh, es la que regula la temperatura. Have you had a look at your definition to see? Oh, oh sorry, I said I was going to read those words with emphasis. Así right? que dije que iba okay. a leerlo con so, énfasis. So I go back one step. Me salté mi propio paso. Okay, feedback is information. Entonces la retroalimentación yeah. es información. About the gap. Respecto de la brecha. Between actual level eh, entre la, el nivel actual and the reference level y el nivel de referencia of a system parameter de un sistema de parámetros 
altered, uh, used to alter the gap. Que se usa para alterar esta brecha o cerrar esta brecha. Okay, that definition you can find in the paper. Esa definición la van a encontrar, digamos, en el, en el artículo. Now that's key to understanding what's in the little control box. Para poder entender lo que pasa en esa cajita. I'll use a few very simple words to describe what's what the, what the function of the bits is. Voy a ocupar algunas palabras muy simples, digamos, para poder describir lo que es la función de esta caja. The box has a register of set point. La, la caja tiene entonces un registro, digamos, de un punto fijo o específico. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's the temperature at which you want to have the room set. Y esa es la temperatura a la, en la cual usted quiere que esté en la habitación. You can raise it if, it's, if you want to. ¿Cierto? La puedes aumentar you si quieres. You can put it down if you want to. Si it's quieres. the system's problem to get the air into the right el place. El problema del sistema, ¿cierto? Que el aire esté en el mismo lugar donde ustedes lo pongan. So, the set point is something the user controls. Así que, digamos, en los puntos fijos que es, es, es algo que ustedes ocupan para controlar. Okay. Then there's a sensor. Después hay un sensor. S E N S O R, mm -hmm. not C E N S. Yeah, sensor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got it now. Okay, um, it's a sensor which is basically a thermometer. Que es básicamente un termómetro. And it monitors the temperature of the room at any time. Y monitorea cierto la temperatura de la habitación en cualquier momento. Then there's what's called a comparator. Y después tenemos entonces algo que es como un comparador. Which in that box is a little bit of electronics. Que en esa caja es un algún uh, dispositivo eléctrico. And it measures the difference between the temperature here and the set point. Y mide la la diferencia entre la temperatura que hay acá y lo que eh, se ha declarado digamos en los puntos. If the temperature here is si gets too far below the set point, está mucho más baja, cierto, que lo que se ha indicado, or too far above it, o mucho más alta, the little box sends a signal, la cajita, cierto, entonces envía una señal, or a message, o un mensaje, to the plant that controls the airflow, a la planta o a la base, cierto, que controla el flujo de aire. Okay. Then the plant kicks in and does its work. When the little bit of um, the, when the signal gets sent down, cuando se envía la señal, along a, a long wire, eh, a través, digamos, de un cable, the machinery has something that can interpret that signal and know whether to put hot air in or cold air in. Now, all of that is very, very basic stuff. When you're having a shower, you are the one who takes the place of that control box. When you're what? You're having a shower. Ah, cuando ustedes están tomando una ducha, dice, ustedes toman cierto el lugar, digamos, de esa caja de control. You are the one who turns on more hot or cold. Ustedes le dan más aire, okay. más, más agua eh, caliente o más agua fría. So you are the set. You 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 are the box. Ustedes son la cajita, cierto. Now, when we're when we're looking at student work to disc, to to basically judge how good it is. Ahora, cuando vemos trabajos de alumnos, cierto, tenemos un trabajo, un ensayo, cualquier producto, digamos, de trabajo alumno, y vamos a, a juzgar o evaluar qué tan bueno es. If it's complex work and not just right or wrong, we generally have two threads running in our minds at once. One of those threads is building up an impression of how good the work is on the whole. Eh, ganar una, tener una impresión de qué tan bueno es el trabajo en su totalidad, como una unidad completa. And the other thread, running simultaneously, el otro camino que corre simultáneamente, is noticing things that stand out because they're well, super well done or a defective. Eh, está, eh, justamente está notando o está alerta a detectar aquellas cosas que, que salen, digamos, que saltan a la vista porque son o están muy bien hechas o son defectuosas. So if we see something that needs to be commented on, we'll write comments in the margin. If it's written work, we're looking at. And while we're doing that, we suspend the other thread temporarily. And then we'll, and then we'll keep reading until some sort of flaw stops us again. Y, eh, y después seguimos leyendo hasta que algún otro tipo de, de falla o de defecto, de digamos, del trabajo vuelve a, a detenernos. 
When we finish judging it, Cuando terminamos de, digamos, de evaluarlo, we may give the student a grade for it. Puede que le demos una calificación often, al alumno. Often do, and then we'll give them an we we'll give them an explanation of why we judge that way. Y lo hacemos, cierto, y además después le damos una explicación de cómo eh, evaluamos, digamos, su trabajo. So we've got two sets of comments that are made. Así que dos tipos de comentarios, dos grupos de comentarios que se hacen. One of the ones that are the things we notice. Uno son esos pequeños de las cosas que vamos notando, cierto. And then a summary one at the bottom, which may not refer to those. Y después un, uno como un resumen, digamos, general al final, que puede que no se refiera a esas pequeñas cosas que hemos escrito antes. Okay, and then we, those are our messages or the codes that we've composed. Y esos son los mensajes o los códigos que hemos compuesto. Now, if you look on books, look up books on how to write good feedback. Ahora, si ustedes ven eh, libros respecto de cómo escribir buena retroalimentación. This is what you'll generally find. Esto es lo que van a encontrar en general. Advice telling you, this is what you should say in feedback. Eh, eh, consejo diciéndote, esto es lo que ustedes deberían decir cuando retroalimenten. Tell the student what's good about the work. Dígale al estudiante qué es lo que está bien respecto de su trabajo. Tell the student what's weak or where the weaknesses are. Tell them what it's worth overall with them, and you tell them that with a mark or a grade. And maybe you tell them how to improve. Now that's not universal, but it's common to do that. Now very, nearly all the advice sheets say, Offer the students some praise first of all. En muchos de los comentarios, digamos, de las sugerencias dicen, ofrezcan el cierto dele al alumno un poquito al principio un poco, digamos, de de no sé cómo decirlo de alabanza, dicen, pero digamos de de decirle lo bueno que está, digamos, al trabajo, resaltar lo positivo primero. Then the student gets their work back. El estudiante entonces recibe su trabajo. And it's common for students to look for the grade first. Y lo primero and then they have a look at what the words written there are and one of the things they look for is does that grade seem justified what, what that's really trying to say is is the person is, is the lecturer or the professor have they really read my work carefully y en el fondo lo que quiere saber es cierto si es que el profesor realmente leyó mi trabajo cuidadosamente. So you couldn't give the student a grade of four and tell them it was brilliant. No puedes darle un cuatro a un estudiante y decirle que fue brillante. No other can you comment on how much effort went into producing it. Tampoco eh, tienes que comentar respecto de cuánto esfuerzo, cierto, le tomó producirlo. Because you simply don't know. Porque simplemente no sabes. One of the students I had, uh, I said to him. Um, this looks like it was dashed off the night before. Now, it happened to be a student that I knew well, so I could say something era, like that. I said, saw him in the corridor soon afterwards. Y lo vi en el, en el, en the car? Corridor, corridor, passageway. Ah, oh, perdón, corridor. Yeah, yeah. Sí. And he said to me, your comment about dashing it off the night before, that's what happened. I said, what happened? He said, I ran out of time. Can I have another go? <laughs> so he got the message all right. Now, when I went through those things that should be in good feedback, telling the student what's good, telling them what's weak, telling them what it's worth, telling them what to do to improve it, I used the word tell deliberately four times. Cuando les hablé de todo respecto de las cosas que debemos hacer para entregar buena retroalimentación, dije, díganle lo que está bien, díganle las debilidades, díganle el valor de la nota, díganle, y usé la palabra decir, ya o díganle cuatro veces deliberadamente. Now, the sort of feedback I've described is all about telling, 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 telling. Now, when it comes to teaching, especially in higher education, especially in higher education, yeah, we've come to the view that we have been in the past too teacher-centered in our teaching, and now we need to be more student-centered. 
hemos, eh, hemos llegado a la, a la visión ¿cierto? de que en el pasado estábamos demasiado centrados en el profesor y ahora el tipo de enseñanza debe ser centrada en el alumno. Si es que nos retrocedemos 30 o 40 años, you find most university lectures consisted of the presentation of information. Eh, nos damos cuenta de que la mayoría de las cátedras o las clases universitarias correspondían sencillamente a la presentación de información. All the students wrote down their notes. Y todos los estudiantes cierto tomaban apuntes. That's called the transmission model of teaching. Y eso se llama el modelo de enseñanza de transmisión de, de conocimiento. So the professor is like a dispensing machine. Así que el profesor es como una una como una máquina dispensadora, digamos. That dispenses students to all, information to all the students. Y que les dispensa, cierto, les entrega información a todos los estudiantes. It's up to the students to learn. Y depende de los estudiantes aprender. Now, it's known that the transmission model of learning is not very efficient. Ahora es conocido, cierto, que este modelo de transmisión de aprendizaje no es muy eficiente. And if any of you have children, y si alguno de ustedes tiene hijos, you'll know that you can tell what your children once and they don't necessarily learn. Saben que pueden decirle una vez a sus hijos, cierto, y no necesariamente aprenden. Here's a simple example. Es un ejemplo bastante simple. In Australia, we used to have many swings in parks. En Australia solíamos tener muchos columpios en los parques. There'd be a heavy piece of wood. Cierto, un pedazo pesado de madera. This thick. Así de grueso. And two chains. Dos cadenas. Going up to a frame. Cierto. Okay. Más de un marco, digamos. And every parent told their kids. Y todos los padres le dijeron a sus hijos. Don't get hit on the head with that piece of wood. Que no te no te pegues en la cabeza con ese pedazo de madera. And you'd see kids standing right beside the swing when it's coming back. Y podías ver todo el rato niños parados al lado de los de los columpios cuando venían de vuelta. And get hit in the head. Y se pegaban en la cabeza. Only do that once. You did it? No, I, all, most of my kids did it. <laughs> they learn by experience. Tell them, tell them, tell them, don't stand near. They get hit by in the head once, they, they stop. They keep out of the road. Okay, so the two big flaws, one of them is that just a transmission model of learning which is not very effective. If you've taught students for a period of time, eh, dice, entonces las dos grandes fallas, ¿cierto? Primero tenemos el modelo de transmisión que no es muy efectivo. Y you, si tú le enseñas a, a alumnos por un periodo de tiempo determinado, you might be surprised and disturbed because they don't take on board the feedback you gave them. Eh, pueden estar sorprendidos y al mismo tiempo eh, confundidos, ¿cierto? Porque no toman en general eh, la retroalimentación que ustedes les entregan. It makes no difference. No hace mucha diferencia. So you might be in the middle of your, a student might be in the middle of their degree. Así que el estudiante puede estar a la mitad de su carrera. And still having the same weaknesses they had in first year. Y puede tener las mismas debilidades que tuvieron el primer año. Now the second main flaw in the feedback model referred to. Y en la segunda gran falla en el modelo de retroalimentación al que me estoy refiriendo. Is that we are acting like that sensor box es que nosotros estamos actuando como esa caja eh, sensora, digamos, del, del aire acondicionado. We know what's expected. Nosotros sabemos lo que se espera. That's the set point. Ese es cierto el, el, el punto, digamos, que, al que nos seteamos. We make judgments about the students' work. Nosotros evaluamos, cierto, hacemos juicios respecto del trabajo de los alumnos. And then we send the signal. Y nosotros enviamos la señal. To whatever's supposed to fix it. Eh, a, a lo que sea que se supone que debe arreglarlo. Which is a student. Que es el estudiante. And it doesn't happen. Y no sucede. Okay. Now, the feedback is all coming from us. We are that little feedback box. Ahora, nosotros somos esa caja. Toda la retroalimentación viene de nosotros. So we've got to find ways in which we can get that feedback box into the students. Así que debemos definir formas para lograr que esa, esa, esa cajita, ¿cierto?, eh, traspasarla, digamos, a los estudiantes. It's not called that, it's not called that if it's personal. If it's not called that, if it's personal, if it's in you, then the person. Ah, sí, si es que está, si es que está, no se llama así, si es que está así, digamos, en la persona. So what we'd say about the students who produce consistently good work. Así que lo que decimos eh, de, de los estudiantes que producen constantemente eh, trabajo, buen trabajo. Is that they are able to monitor and control. Es que son capaces de monitorear y controlar. The quality of their production. La, la calidad de su propia producción, digamos. While it's under production. Mientras la están produciendo. 
And that's the key thing. Y ese es el aspecto clave. They can do it live. Lo pueden hacer, digamos, en vivo. They don't call it feedback, they just call it um, repairing it, fixing things up, making it better. Y no le llaman retroalimentación, sencillamente le llaman arreglar, ¿cierto? Y, y mejorar lo, lo que estoy haciendo. So our challenge is how can we teach students to learn to make to monitor and control the quality of their own work while they are doing it. Then we are in the control of our own learning and in control of our own productions. By doing it the way we're doing, we're constantly reinforcing the students' dependent dependence on the teacher. La forma en que lo estamos haciendo actualmente nos hace, estamos reforzándolo, estamos reforzando continuamente que el estudiante depende del profesor. Now, our two aims, um, we, one of them is, uh, that's, got to, that's got to happen, but there's one that they've got to do as well. Do you ever find students who don't actually answer the question that you asked? <laughs> Eso es algo, pero hay, hay otra cosa también que debemos definir. ¿Se encuentran ustedes normalmente con estudiantes que no responden la pregunta que ustedes están haciendo? They may do something like what you're talking about. Pueden responder algo parecido a lo que ustedes de lo que están hablando. But it's not exactly addressing the issue. Pero no es exactamente abordar el, el, el tema o el problema que ustedes están preguntando. How many of you have experienced that? ¿Alguno de ustedes ha experimentado yeah. eso? Yeah. Um, I, I found it very common. I started teaching my teaching career in 1964. Para mí ha sido muy común. Yo empecé mi carrera en, en, digamos, en, en enseñanza en el año 1965. And that bothered me then. Y eso me molestó en ese momento. So much so that I nearly got a rubber stamp made telling them they haven't answered the question. Y casi que me hizo un timbre, cierto, de esos de goma para ponerle la prueba. No me han contestado la pregunta. Esto no es lo que pregunté. Let me give you an example. Déjeme darles un ejemplo. Suppose we ask students to write a critical, supposing I ask you to write a critical review of three journal articles. And what you give me is a summary of the information that's in each of them. A summary, a summary of, of the information one. that's okay. in each of them. Can you see that's not in the same genre as a critical review? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it means to do a critical review, you need to stand back and make judgments about the three articles. Para poder hacer un comentario crítico, debo dar cierto un paso hacia atrás, alejarme y hacer eh, comentarios críticos, cierto, de, eh, de los tres artículos. Maybe you're making comparisons. Quizás puedo eh, hacer comparaciones. Pointing out some similarities. Eh, apuntar a ciertas similitudes. Dis disagreements between their views. O conflictos entre la visión de cada uno de los artículos. And then something about what you think about those. Y quizás también algo respecto de lo que ustedes piensan respecto a esos artículos. And then something to justify your judgment. You can say th these two arguments might have the appearance of being on the same line, but they are actually um, at counter, counter purposes. Okay. So you're, you're analyzing what's in the articles and providing an, a, an informed opinion about them and informing the, com, the person who's reading it the reasons for your critical review. Now, some students will simply, if you ask for a critical review, they will simply summarize the three. But some students think that critical means you've got to criticize everything in them. And that's just as wrong. And that's because they don't understand the significance of the words critical review. So the students who do that and get lower grades need to learn what a critical review looks like. 
aprender o deben ver qué es lo que es un comentario crítico, conocer uno, saber cómo es. And they are unlikely to learn that by you simply telling them. Y es muy difícil que lo aprendan solo porque nosotros se los decimos. So, if, if students are doing work that's not in the response genre, you can't really evaluate it. Ahora, si los estudiantes están haciendo trabajo que no está en el género, digamos, la misma categoría de respuesta que ustedes están buscando, no puedes realmente evaluarlo. I had a student once who couldn't get that point. She couldn't understand it. Yo tuve una alumna una vez que sencillamente no lograba captar esa idea, no, no podía entenderlo. No matter what I said, she didn't really get the message. So I, I said to her, listen to this example. It's a silly example, but I'll tell it to you. I asked you for a pineapple. You gave me a boot. And by giving me a boot, you are asking me to say how good a pineapple it is. And I say, it's not a pineapple at all. It's a boot. I can't eat it. It's not fruit. That really, um, that really shook her. And I said, look, I will take some time with you and show you what, why what you've done is not what's being asked for. And in just a few minutes, I was able to explain to her that there's such a thing that when you have words like critical review, they have a special meaning. Y pude explicarle en algunos minutos ciertas cosas como que, por ejemplo, si tienes un término como eh, comentario crítico, hay ciertas palabras como esas which had never been explained to her, que nunca había, le habían sido explicadas, but which all the smarter kids knew. pero que todos los, los, los otros eh, alumnos más, digamos, más eh, eh, inteligentes digamos, sabían. So that's, that's one of the problems, especially for students who come into our universities, like um, at the lower end of the ability scale. Eh, eh, este es, eh, es uno de los problemas que sucede con los alumnos cuando ingresan a las universidades, ¿cierto? At the lowering, you said? Lower, yeah. At the lower, At the lower, lower levels, ability, yeah. Like yeah. Sí, vamos como a, niveles, a los primeros niveles. They may well be equally able with other students, but they've never been shown. Eh, puede que eh, sean eh, igual de capaces que otros estudiantes, pero nunca les han sido, eh, nunca eh, los han preparado para eso o no, no saben. Now let me explain to you what's going on in my head if I read, say, 50 pieces of student work. Déjeme contarles cuál es el proceso mental que que me pasa a mí cuando leo, por ejemplo, cinco, o sea, perdón, 50 trabajos de alumnos, puede ser ensayos u otra cosa. I'm making a judgment about the quality of them. Estoy haciendo una eh, evaluación, cierto, sobre la calidad de estos trabajos. And I range everything from abysmal to really good. Y eh, hago un ranking, ¿cierto? Lo evalúo desde algo que es abismal, así, abominable, dice, hasta algo eh, muy bueno. So, as I do that, it constantly refreshes my understanding of what quality is. Entonces, a medida que hago eso, ese proceso constantemente refleja mi entendimiento respecto de qué es lo que es calidad. It, ref it, 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 re it reinforces it in a way which I could not do by writing descriptions. Y lo refuerza de, de una forma que no podría yo aprender si es que lo estuviese escribiendo descripciones. It's something I carry around, I develop by experience, and I see, I get it refreshed every time I read a set of student papers. Es algo que llevo en mí, ¿cierto? Y que he aprendido por experiencia y que se refresca o se actualiza cada vez que leo nuevos trabajos de estudiantes. There's another thing I get to, I get to realize. I, I, I might grade many students with a five. Y esto es otra cosa que, que he aprendido, ¿cierto? Puedo ponerle a muchos estudiantes un 5. They will not be identical. Y no van a ser idénticos. So there are different ways Hay diferentes of formas earning a grade of five. de poder escribir algo que valga un 5. There's not just one single way. No hay solamente una forma. I know that. Yo sé eso. The students don't. Los estudiantes no saben. Many students don't see any work other than their own. Muchos estudiantes no ven ningún otro trabajo que no sea el propio. So what they get is their work. Así que lo que ellos ven es su trabajo. A number. Un número. An explanation for the number. Una explicación por ese número. And some comments. Y algunos comentarios. That's what they have to do. Eso es lo que tienen que hacer. It's no good saying to the students, 
Uh, this is too general. No es bueno, no puedo decirle al estudiante, esto es muy general. The students might, might, they might understand the word in general, but they don't understand what part of their work is too general. Pueden entender el significado de la palabra general, pero no saben, por ejemplo, qué parte de su trabajo fue muy general. And what it is that makes it that. Y qué es lo que hace que sea general. Hmm. Or we might use a word like sweeping generalization. O por ejemplo, podemos usar una, un término como decir esta es una absoluta generalización. And the students, is, is, what, what's it in? It's, it's not translatable. Okay, 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 okay. Sweeping, pues, sweeping es como absoluto, o sea, es una generalización, es una total generalización, pero sweeping también significa barrer. Okay. Se dice si el alumno no sabe, para él sweeping solamente significa barrer. Okay, so students think this, right? Not that at all. It means it's just, whew. No? Or we might say, give me some examples. And they give examples and don't tell you how they're linked together. Because they don't know how to construct an argument. So students have to learn that. We notice that all the time because We are highly, we are highly able students. We are well qualified. Eh, nosotros, eh, ellos tienen que aprender a hacer eso. Nosotros podemos hacerlo, ¿cierto? Porque nosotros vemos el trabajo y porque somos, eh, digamos, we're highly, highly able. Y porque tenemos la, la habilidad de hacerlo y porque estamos calificados para hacerlo. If we weren't, we wouldn't be university professors. Y si no lo fuésemos, no seríamos profesores universitarios. And a lot of the things that we pick up on the way through our courses. Y muchas de las cosas que captamos o aprendimos, digamos, mientras avanzamos en nuestra carrera, we picked up without anyone explaining them to us. Probablemente las captamos sin que nadie nos explicara. It all made sense to us. No hacía sentido. But that's not the case for lots of students who struggle. Pero ese no es el caso para muchos estudiantes que tienen más problemas. Okay. Now, there's a German philosopher called um, Wittgenstein, Ludwig Wittgenstein. Hay un, un filósofo alemán que se llama Wittgenstein. His first, his, the first half of his career, he was very much a positivist and, and thinking of ways of doing special research. La, la, la primera mitad de su carrera era positivist. Positivist. Sí, era un posi positivista, sí, eh, y estaba viendo formas en que hacer investigación. So a very cut and dried experimentalist. Era un experimental, eh, un exper experiment no sé cómo decirlo, experimentalista, yeah. sí, eh, eh, como puro, digamos. And then there was a period in his life when he produced nothing. Y de su vida en que no and when he, came when he came through that, he had the opposite view. Y volvió de ahí, tenía la visión, una visión and he made lots and lots of notes of what had gone through his head during that period. And he found that we can cope with knowledge that's much less structured than what, that is, than what experimentalism is. Y entonces, eh, eh, dijo que podemos, digamos, obtener conocimiento de una forma mucho menos estructurada de lo que era la exper and, exper yeah. And the last piece of work that's published under his name y el único, el último trabajo que probablemente tiene su nombre was patched together from his notes fue como compuesto, digamos, eh, con diferentes pedazos, digamos, de sus notas. I, th I think by his wife. Creo que lo hizo su esposa. So it's a bit higgly-piggly to read. Así que es un poquitito complejo, ¿cierto?, de leer. But what he did say, he, there were some things came up over and over again. One was the, the thing about noticing. Pero había un concepto, varios conceptos que volvían, ¿cierto?, eran recurrentes. Y uno de ellos era el, el, el concepto de eh, darse cuenta o de advertir. And what he said is that we notice things that are out of the ordinary. Y lo que, una de las cosas que él decía era que nos damos cuenta de cosas que son extraordinarias. They differ from our expectation. Y que difieren de nuestra expecta expectativa. So, if I told you now that the carpet is purple and lime green stripes. Si yo les dijera ahora que la, la alfombra es, eh, tiene rayas o líneas eh, moradas y, y verde y limón. Most of you wouldn't look down and check. Muchos de ustedes wouldn't. Wouldn't. Muchos de ustedes no, no, no ni siquiera mirarían. But if you'd come in the door and it had changed to that from what it was last time you were here. Pero si ustedes entran por la puerta, cierto, y cambia la alfombra de la última vez que vinieron. You'd probably say to your friend. Probablemente le dirían a su amigo. Just look at this carpet. Mira, cambiaron la alfombra. You see, it's different from es what you used to. De lo que era. It might offend. It might please you. 
but it's a change. Puede que te ofenda, puede que te agrade, pero es un cambio. Yet that's what we're doing when we're noticing. Y eso es lo que hacemos cuando nos damos cuenta. And when we're marking student work, we are noticing things that differ from our expectations or our hopes. So if a student is making a strong statement without any support, we might say, you cannot say that without support. It obviously hasn't been noticed by the student. But we notice it because we're experts. Now that's a skill that students have to learn. When I read my articles while they're in production, Cuando yo estoy leyendo mis artículos mientras están en producción, digamos, I often come across sentences which are poorly worded. En muchas veces me encuentro con eh, frases o oraciones que están mal redactadas. And sometimes I come across a sentence which is similar to the one about five times up in the paragraph. Y, y, y a veces me encuentro con una oración, cierto, que es similar a una que ya he usado más o menos unas cinco veces en el, en el párrafo. And I think, wait on, haven't I said that? Y digo, bueno, ¿no lo he dicho antes? In my latest article, en mi último artículo, el más reciente, I read through it the other night, lo leí la otra vez, and I found that the copy editor, y eh, me di cuenta cierto de que el editor, digamos de la copia, had changed the spelling of a word that can be spelt two ways. Había cambiado cierto la, la ortografía o la forma de escribir una palabra que puede ser escrita de ambas formas. And in the word as printed, y el, in the word as it as it is printed, como está digamos publicada, both are in there. Las dos están ahí. It's like, ah, spelt the word wrongly, Exacto. but put, but you can see why. Está la palabra mal escrita, pero pueden ver por qué. So there's an error in my paper. Hay un error en mi papel. If you find it, you say serio. that was the copy editor's fault. Si la encuentran, le puedo decir que era es, es culpa del editor. Not the author's fault. No del autor. Okay. Now, how can we get students to to do some of this stuff? ¿Cómo podemos lograr entonces que los estudiantes hagan we have to give students experience in making judgments about the quality of works of the same kind that they are producing themselves. Now that's well and truly um, described in the paper. And in the other papers that are the other chapters are referred to. And let me tell you how I did this in class. I asked my students to write a one-page piece or one-page little essay. About 300 words. On a question which they could not answer from my lectures. De una pregunta que ellos no pudiesen responder a partir de mi clase o mi cátedra. O from the textbook. O del libro de texto. O from the internet. Or, or from what? Internet. O, o del internet. Okay. They had to put things together in new ways. Tenían que, cierto, ordenar el, el, el asunto, digamos, eh, de nuevas formas. They brought it on a single side of A4 paper. Eh, eh, escribieron en, una, en un lado, digamos, de del, la hoja. Yep. So they each brought three copies to the to the class. Tenían que traer tres copias a la clase. Then I hold them. I told them to hold up one copy like this. Y le dije que si tuvieran en alto una copia así. And I simply mixed them up. Y yo simplemente las mezclé, cierto, entre ellos. Yep. Now I said, have a look at the work that's in front of you. Ahora mira el trabajo que está en frente tuyo. And I've got three questions for you. Y tengo tres preguntas para ti. The first question is this. La primera pregunta es. How good is it? The second question, I'll tell you about that in a minute. How good is it? The student's first reaction was this. How would I know I'm not the professor? I said, that's precisely what I'm trying to teach you. How to do it. How, how to judge quality. I'm trying to see, not use feedback, but get them to experience and learn the same stuff as if they always understood the feedback. 
lo que no quiero es sencillamente darte la retroalimentación, sino darte la experiencia, cierto, y el conocimiento como si siempre hubieses entendido la retroalimentación. The second question I said was, where's the rubric or the criteria? En la segunda pregunta que le dije, que le hice, ¿dónde está la rubrica o los criterios? I said there aren't any. You're on your own. No hay ninguna. Están solos. Háganlo solo. I said, well, why not? Because I said, I want you to look at the text that's in front of you and tell me how good it is. I wanted to teach them to look to notice things. Now, the second task I gave them was I asked them to draw a line on the paper les pedí en la segunda tarea que les pedí que hicieran es que eh, dibujaran una línea, ¿cierto? About that long. Así, más o menos de, digamos, de... Put the letter A down here. De larga, que pusieran la letra A. A for awful, B for a brilliant. Por, no sé, abominable, horrible, y B por okay. brillante. And I said, put a cross on that line. Y a, dibujen una cruz en, sobre la línea. Where you think this paper would be. En el punto donde ustedes creen que está, digamos, este, este trabajo. So if it's brilliant, it's up this end. Si es que, si es que está acá, ¿cierto? Si es que es brillante. It's awful at that end. Y si es que es hor horrible o okay. malo, digamos, en esta. The next task is, write an ex why do you put the cross there? Y la tercera tarea es, ¿por qué pusiste la cruz ahí? The third thing is, ah, no, la segunda, then give some advice to the person who produced this, y la última tarea, ¿cierto? Dale consejo, telling consejo them how it could have been done better. A la persona que produjo esto y diciéndoles cómo pudiese mejorar. So the three concrete things they had to do, Así que las tres cosas concretas que debían hacer, making the judgments not concrete, they had to put a cross, they had to explain why they put it there, uh -huh. and they had to Say some, give some advice to the person who produced it. Entonces, son tres cosas concretas. Hacer la evaluación no es algo concreto, ¿cierto? La primera es poner la cruz en el lugar, en la línea donde correspondía. Segundo es explicar por qué puse la cruz ahí. Y tercero es dar un consejo al autor de cómo podía mejorarlo. Now, if you're going to provide advice to somebody about how their work could be better, Ahora, si tú le vas a dar un consejo a vas a asesorar a alguien respecto de cómo puede mejorar su trabajo, you really have to have had their, read their work carefully. Eh, realmente tienes que haber leído el trabajo cuidadosamente. Mm. So, um, they were a bit hesitant to do this. Al principio estaban un poco reticentes, ¿cierto? Um, hacer esta actividad. But they did it anyway. Pero lo hicieron igual. And then I, um, I simply collected all, like, I collected all of those. Después los retiré todos. And I asked them to hold up another one. Les pedí que es, eh, otro and switch them around again. Said, is this the same one that you had before? Until I had a different one. So it wasn't, it wasn't a group of three who knew one another swapping their own papers. And I did the same thing. And again, if there's enough time. I used to fit this in an hour. I could always do two in an hour, not always three. Y, eh, y, y lo hacía tres veces si es que tenía tiempo. No siempre me alcanzó para hacerlo tres veces, siempre hice dos por lo menos en una hora. Eh, y a veces me alcanzó para tres. Now I said, they all have to be returned to their owners, so the owners get the papers back. And sometimes the other students' judgments might be very different. And I said, what happens about that? And I said, don't worry. You're trying to learn how to make the judgments. There's a bit of trial and error in this. No one... The students didn't get any any sort of uh, any grade for doing this exercise. I told them to trust me for two weeks doing it. And if they have any problems, um, if they really feel uncomfortable with it, come and talk with me. Nobody came and talked with me. <laughs> eventually got used to doing it. And they looked forward to doing it. So they were, it was fairly simple judgments, but they were learning to make judgments and learning to notice. Now I had a class of about 20, that's how many I had. So in the week I had six, seven or eight of these classes of 20. 
y en una semana yo tenía unas siete u ocho clases, digamos, cursos, digamos, de estas 20 personas. Now, after a while, después de un tiempo, a student would come to me privately while this is going. And they said, I don't know how to, how to assess it. Y decía, no sé cómo Because what you've asked us to do and what this student has done are not the same. No es lo mismo. She should have done something else. Haber hecho otra cosa. You didn't want that. You wanted something Tú no else. Esto. I said, That's, I'm shocked. I'm, dice, I'm horrified. Estoy en And I said, 40% of my students do that. And you might be one of the 40%. Y tú ser uno de esos 40. They recognized that it was in the wrong response genre. So then I changed, I added a question Así to the original questions. So that the first question became, Entonces, does it answer the question? If it really doesn't, si no responde, then you can't género, grade it. No, no It's a boot instead of a pineapple. Una bota en vez de una piña. That was an important discovery for some of those students. Ese fue un para de los But I wanted all the students to know Pero that. Yo que todos los saber eso. I haven't told you important detail about this yet. Y no les he de esto But when I gave the students the task, les di la tarea a los I went and wrote my own response to it. Fui y mi a la tarea. And it was as good a response as I could write. Okay. So when they were waving them around, así que fui así la pasada, I put mine in there too. And then I also got one of the students ones. Así que a mí me llegó una de las de los so it was interesting for me to do the same. Así que fue para mí hacer lo mismo. But Respecto two or three trabajo. students got to see my own one. Pero dos o tres estudiantes recibieron mi propio trabajo. And after a number of sessions of this, y después de un número de algunas sesiones, de quite a few students <coughs> recognized uh, that, that they realized the quality of their own. Eh, algo, varios estudiantes podían, digamos, eh, reconocer eh, the quality of their own. Their own, yes. Pudieron empezar a, a reconocer la calidad de su propio trabajo. Especially those who had seen mine. And then I told them that mine was in the pool. You tell them? I told them. So I said, now next week I'm going to do, give you everybody my, my, my best shot. I'm not saying it's the best that could possibly be written. Some of you could maybe buy, write a better one. But it's the best I can do. Because I want to talk to you and I want to let you see what I think is very high quality. And I want you to be able to compare where you are with high quality. Now you see the students were starting to see the long line of what quality looks like, the quality ranges they saw one another's work. And I also started to see that for a given point on the line, there were different kinds, different ways of doing it. Both of which I know as a professor, But they had to learn. They said, and they come back to the question, why didn't you, why didn't you um, use criteria? Now, I've written extensively about this. But I, I told them, if I give you criteria, that will give you certain way of viewing the, your own work, or give other people's work. And it will shape your writing more than it should. Shape, shape your writing more ah, than it should. 
And in the big world out there after you graduate, there aren't rubrics and criteria sheets floating around. You have to make judgment on the quality of the thing in front of you. I'll give you a con concrete example. Our capital city is, is Canberra. Canberra es nuestra capital. And sometimes we refer to the government as Canberra. Y a veces, eh, nos referimos a, a, al, al gobierno como Canberra. Okay, so I was dean, dean of education at the time. Yo era el decano de educación en ese momento. Canberra sends up a big volume that is a research report. Eh, el gobierno entonces me envía eh, un, un volumen grande, un tomo, ¿cierto? De un eh, reporte de investigación. And they want my feedback on it. Y quieren mi retroalimentación. I say you're joking because the whole thing's finished and it's all in a bound report. Eh, me dice, yo, yo pensé, bueno, esto es una broma, dice, porque esto es un producto terminado y eh, está ya, digamos, en, en un libro. De so reporte. I gave it to one of my staff, he thought it was great. Se lo pasé a uno de las personas que trabajó conmigo y le pareció Because super. it was relevant to what he teaches. Porque era relevante para lo que Now, estaba enseñando. I'll tell you about another report that came from Canberra. Y le voy a hablar de otro reporte que llegó, desde, digamos, de Canberra. He went to a cousin of mine who was the head of an accounting firm. It got to him. Got, it, it was sent to him okay. from Canberra. Fue enviado a uno de, de un primo mío que estaba también trabajando. En And it was about changes empresa. in property law. Y era respecto de cambios en la ley de propiedad. And he had a person in his practice. Y él tenía una persona en su empresa, su práctica. Who was an expert in property law and property accounting. Que era eh, un experto, digamos, en ley de propiedad. And he gave it to her and he Pero said. What are the implications of this change in the laws for our practice? So a very different function. But just getting feedback didn't do anything. But that's very important. So she, this, this woman who was the property person, there are no criteria that will tell her how relevant it is to their accounting practice. She has to take these new laws and the reasons for them and apply that to what she does. That's what I mean by there aren't any big rubrics around there all the time. Graduates will be asked to evaluate and make decisions about lots of things. Where the only guideline is in their heads. Their professional or discipline knowledge and experience. Now, the, one of those um, pay, one of those book chapters Uno de esos de los que um, it was started with backwards assessment judgment. It was backwards. You said assessment what? evaluation. Yeah, <coughs> but backward assessment evaluations. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That one. It's really about this. When you have a look at the history of making complex judgments, you'll very often find that the judgment is made and when the judgment is explained or justified, the words and concepts that are used always contain criteria. Except by appealing to criteria. Porque no puede justificar cierto un juicio o una evaluación sin apelar al criterio. And the criteria have a particular meaning that's relevant to that work. Y los criterios tienen un significado particular que es relevante a ese campo. So you don't put in your description every possible criterion you could use. Así que no pones en tu descripción cierto cuál todos los criterios posibles que pudieses imaginar. You include those that played the biggest role in your judging. Incluyes aquellos que juegan el rol, los roles más importantes en tu evaluación. And that's what I wanted to teach my students as well. They might use different words from the ones I would, but when you look closely, they are still criteria. I asked a little 
little boy once, about three and a half years old, about the difference between two particular stories. And, I, and he said, um, this is what happens in this one. And the other one, he said, and this has got that in it. And I said, but that's got some of this as well. And he said, there's a television program. He said, yes, but it's all chopped up. Chopped up. So he used like little kids' words to imply that he liked the continuity of the other one. And he didn't like things that were fragmented. That's valid for a judgment. It's not something you have to be expert, something you have to learn to be able to do. You, you invoke whatever criteria are relevant to that judgment about that object. Now, can you see how far that is away from the old model of criteria? Si se dan cuenta, eso está muy alejado, digamos, del modelo, digamos, antiguo de criterio. In the article, in the book chapter that's called Learning from Assessment Events, I like the, I liken, or I, I point the relationship between a rubric and a grill. Me refiero a la diferencia entre una rubrica y una... Huh? Grill. A grill. See, a grill. Oh, yeah, a grill. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And I say, when you're going to evaluate things with, with a rubric, you're looking through the grill, and you're seeing those things which the grill specifies you should look for. I want to leave your minds open so you think, so that you notice the things that matter. There's a, a wonderful little book um, by a former anatomist. And she's called her little book The Anatomy of Judgment. And one little thing she says there is how do we tell how do we get students to see Rather than no, rather than notice what they should what they are told they should see. ¿Cómo podemos enseñarle a nuestros estudiantes a, 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 que, ellos, a que puedan ver en vez de ver solamente aquellas cosas que les dicen que deben ver o, o darse cuenta de aquellas cosas que les piden que vean? And one of the one of the uh, ways she does this is that she gave the student X-ray images of hands. Y una de las formas en que yo, ella hace esto es que le entrega a sus estudiantes eh, radiografías de manos. She asks the students to describe the x-rays of the two pairs of hands. Eh, le, dice, le pide a sus estudiantes que puedan eh, describir eh, lo que ven, digamos, de dos, dos tipos de manos. One, one pair of hands was printed, was printed smaller than the others. Uno, un par de manos fue... Eh, estaba impresa, digamos, se veía más pequeña que otra. And the students assumed they were child's hands. Y ellos asumieron que eran, los estudiantes asumieron que eran manos de niños. And that assumption changed their description. Y esa, eh, digamos, lo que asumieron, ¿cierto?, cambió su descripción. Because all she wanted to do was for them to describe where the bones are. Porque todo lo que ella quería es que ellos describieran dónde, describieran dónde están los huesos. And they said, this is obviously a child's hand. Y ellos dijeron, esto obviamente es la mano de un niño. And, ch and children might have hands like this for all these reasons. Y los niños pueden tener manos como esta por todo esto. They didn't razones. describe what they saw. Pero no describieron lo que vieron. But I want students to notice, when, when they're looking at something, to see what's there. Es importante, o sea, lo que queremos es que los estudiantes... Cuando vean algo, vean lo que está ahí. For myself, when I'm reviewing journal article manuscripts, I say, let the manuscript talk to me. Cuando yo estoy revisando, por ejemplo, un manuscrito, ¿cierto?, de un, un artículo para una revista, digo que el manuscrito me hable a mí. And, try, and I try to look in detail at what detalle, that document is telling me. Lo que ese documento me está diciendo. And then make a judgment. Y desde ahí hacer una evaluación. ¿no? Now I've run out of steam. <laughs> you got the idea? Okay. Okay. Um, do any of you have questions or things you want to ask about?
Feedback to the teachers coming because they've made a judgment. El, 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 la retroalimentación que viene hacia el profesor es porque ellos han emitido un juicio también. And students are capable of making pretty good judgments y los estudiantes son capaces de hacer evaluaciones o juicios bastante buenos without any guidance sin guía if they're motivated to do it. Si es que están motivados para hacerlo. I'll tell you another story. Le voy a dar otra historia. In one of my classes, there, was, um, there were two students, a male and a female, who always used to sit together in the front seat. Uh, they, they wanted? They always sat together in the front seat, yeah. And one time when I was returning their work with a grade on it, I handed them all, I handed them all out. And the woman said to me, I'm not happy with this. I said, why is that? She, she said, because I'm used to getting higher grades. Estoy a más alta. And I said, but this is what I judge it to be worth. I said, can you give me two clean copies of your work that don't have my, like my marks on them? I said, I will reread yours and I'll give it to a colleague to read and I won't brief him beforehand. Y dices, ¿tú me puedes dar dos eh, copias, digamos, de lo que acabas, of the same work? Yes. Del trabajo que acabas de hacer, eh, que no tenga mi nota, que no tenga ninguno de mis comentarios, y yo se los voy a, pasar, a referir a mis colegas, a dos colegas, para que ellos lo lean, sin decirles nada, sin hacer ningún comentario, digamos. I know that sometimes when you, you do things late at night, your judgment, you're not too sure of your judgment. Yo sé que muchas veces cuando uno hace algo muy tarde en la noche, puede que no, no estar tan seguro de cómo estoy evaluando. And, and I thought maybe hers is one of those. A lo mejor el trabajo de ella era uno de esos casos. So I read it through again, and I said, Así que lo leí de nuevo. No, that's what I think it's worth. No, esto es lo que creo que vale. I gave the other copy to my colleague. Le di la otra copia a I just said to him, colega. can you grade this? Y le dije, ¿puedes ponerle evaluación? He came back, it had a mark, uh, but it was almost exactly the same as mine. Y cuando volvió, tenía una relación casi igual. So I thought she's not going to believe me because she's, she's thinking I'm going to put pressure on my colleague. So after thinking about it for a while, I went to two students who had done really, really excellent work. And I said, would you be able to give me clean copies of your assignments. I told them what I wanted to do and they agreed. So, they, so the next time I saw them, I handed her her own work and said, um, it's, it's exactly the same and my colleagues are slightly different but basically the same for the same reasons. But have a look at these two works. And if you can't see the difference between the quality of yours and these, then we'll talk about it. So she took them home, brought them back next week. And she just handed them back. And I said, so what? Do you want to talk? And she said, no. She said, I get it. I get it. She said, they are so good, aren't they? I said, yes. Yes, they're so good. Now the student, the, the fellow who was sitting beside her, he said, can I see those two as well? And I said, well, I've got permission for one student. Yes, you can have a look at them, but just don't lose them and I'll get them back. Sure. Came back the next week and he said, I see it now. I could have done that if I'd only known. See, so there's there's a whole lot of, and yet I didn't give them, there were no criteria for the judgments, no, nothing like that. They just read these other students' work and their own, and they said there's no competition. And that was simply the power of having real examples. Didn't cost me anything to do. No, I was very appreciative of the students who gave me their papers. Mm. That was part of my thinking behind writing the articles and trying different things when I was teaching again. Incidentally, the students were very appreciative of the course the way I ran it. The what? Of the course the way I ran it. 
eh, el, el, los estudiantes estaban, valoraron mucho el, el, el curso, digamos, en el que trabajamos eso. Now, I'm not saying that you should do the same. No, estoy diciendo que ustedes dicen hacer lo mismo. But what I am saying is this. The classical feedback model is limited. Lo que quiero decir con esto es que el modelo clásico de retroalimentación es limitado. And there are other ways that are not labor intensive. Y que hay otras eh, eh, formas que no son tan trabajosas. Of equipping the students better. De equipar o de entregar mejores herramientas a los estudiantes. To, to monitor and control the quality of their own work. Para que puedan monitorear y controlar la calidad de su propio trabajo. As they become the little box on the wall. Y ellos se convierten entonces en esa pequeña cajita en la pared. Okay. Uh -huh.